And ladies and gentlemen, this person is not with us anymore. New York left-wing activist poet stepped to death at Brooklyn bus stop by unhinged stranger. And from what I can see about this article, he walked past him, they saw the guy cross the street, start kicking the scooter, and they decided, hey, we can just walk in the same direction. I would not do that. If somebody is acting special, I'll walk the other block. Because if I have to be honest, I don't understand far leftist people. This guy approved of safe injection in New York. I'm like, why? Well, a good friend of his passed away. I can understand that. But I'm like, why support safe injection when you can maybe help them psychologically why they think they might need the safe injection? Isn't that better? And it's these policies that I'm like, why? So this is the couple. That is the girlfriend. The girlfriend supports Antifa. The girlfriend supports BLM. She doesn't support the police. She's actually wanted to defund the police. Here you have the gangster story. You can pause the video and read it by yourself. And I hope this is not true, but people say that this guy is on the loose and he also tweeted that he's from Antifa. I hope it's not true, but it's kind of ironic that you advocate for safety for everybody and now you realize, yo, I'm actually friends of everybody and suddenly I'm the enemy of myself. I would say this is the best solution. If you don't want to send these people to prison because you care about them so much, send them to a special prison where they can smoke the thing because you decriminalize anyway, make sure they think do special stuff, just make it different, safer, in a way that you have it under control, not the person that doesn't have control in their own life. And if you don't believe me because I'm exaggerating again, Public Public Safety Commissioner warns people not to call 911 unless there's a risk of death as woke them run city struggles to cope with a slew of ODs. Do you really want more safe injection in left-leaning city? I'm like, come on, man. I, I don't understand how I see this as an issue. And I have one working eye. Our 911 system is getting hammered this morning with multiple person incident, multiple overdose in the Northwest Park blocks. Please do not call 911 except in an event of life and death, emergency or crime in progress. 911, what's your emergency? Hey, I think somebody is going to rob me. We have a big issue. Can you send the cops? Are you dying? No, do not call 911. Bye, click. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just stupid. You can't be nice to an issue without a solution. You know what? I got a band-aid forever, but you never prevent the wound. You just tell people, well, if you like to cut yourself, we'll give you a safer knife. I'm like, how? Commissioner Rene Gonzalez told locals that its emergency service hotline was overwhelmed with people calling about members of public suffering fentanyl overdose. Oregon decriminalized hot drugs used three years ago. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, they passed a law that caused a lot of people to almost die. And now they're telling you our system is warm. Only call us when you're really dying. And if you don't believe me because I'm exaggerating again, anti-cop Minnesota Democrat official left bloodied in a violent carjacking now calls for tougher crime laws. I don't want to advocate for this, but it's the only way that you can make people accountable for their actions, even those that are voting for these bills. And I don't want this to be normal to be beaten in front of your kids and break your bones, but hey, be careful. She also called for defunding the police. And now she's like, we need to find these people. They're evil. I'm like, yeah, good luck surviving in the Democratic Party. And if you don't believe me, Philadelphia journalist Josh Kruger shot and killed inside Point Breeze neighborhood home. And this is the same person that actually denied there was a crime wave in Philadelphia. I can understand that you're like, hey man, I don't want people to be locked up because that's not helping them. But I'm like, yeah, you give them free name to express their ideology. And hey, when they meet you, you're going to understand what we meant. And if you don't believe me, slain Baltimore CEO died of strangulation and blunt force trauma, court documents say. This person is extremely dangerous. Tonight, a growing manhunt underway for convicted felon Jason Billingsley, suspected of murdering a tech CEO inside a Baltimore apartment building. This individual will kill and he will rape. Records show Billingsley pleaded guilty to first degree assault in 2009 second degree assault in 2011 and he pleaded guilty to a first degree sex offense in 2015 and was sentenced to 30 years in prison with 16 months already served. He was released from prison in October 2022. 
Billingsley had not been paroled, but was released, quote, on mandatory supervision as required by statute. A spokesperson for Maryland's Department of Public Safety and Correctional Services. You know why this is horrible for the lady? She opened the door for him as if he lost his key. I care about the marginalized people, so I will give them more empathy. And sometimes this empathy would put you in a special situation because it would not surprise me. Actually, I would bet money on it that if it was a white man, she would be like, do you live in this building? And all I'm saying with this video, the policies that you're passing, I don't trust them. And when I see certain things, I avoid them. You don't see that. And that is the reason many times you're the ones that fall victims by the own things that you're voting for. Let me know what you think.